In this tutorial, I will show you how to make a RFID reading USB keyboard that types out the ID of RFID tags using the US Newbie. For this project, you will need the US Newbie, the ID12 RFID tag reader with a breakout board, and items such as wires and a breadboard. The circuit is very simple. First, connect the ground and power. The US Newbie should be powered with 5 volts and the ID12 should be powered by the US Newbie. The ID12 can output data in three formats. Connect the format selector pin to ground so it outputs ASCII through a serial port. Connect the ID12's reset pin to US Newbie's port D1 so the ID12 can be reset. This is sometimes needed for the format selection to take effect. Finally, connect the ID12's data 0 pin to the US Newbie's port D0, which is the serial port input. Now let's start coding the device firmware. Open your editor and start the project. Make sure your project is configured correctly with the right microcontroller at the correct clock speed. And keep in mind that the bootloader pretends to be a USB ASP. Open your project directory and we are going to download VUSB which is a key software module that allows US Newbie to become a USB device such as a keyboard. Open the download and you are going to copy the folder called USB DRV into your project directory. And inside there, you are going to add USB DRV.C and USB DRV ASM.S into your project. And then copy USB config prototype and paste it into your project directory. Now rename this prototype so that it is no longer a prototype. And then add it into your project. Then in your code, you are going to include the USB config.h file and the USB DRV.h file inside USB DRV. Now I am going to show you how to configure VUSB using USB config.h. I'm just going to replace this file with a finished copy and now I will show you the comparison between the prototype and the finished version. The first section in the configuration is the hardware configuration. Take a look at the US Newbie's circuit schematic. Note that the USB bus D plus line is connected to port D2 and D minus is connected to port D7. Edit the config file to reflect these settings. Enable the interrupt in endpoint so we can send data from the Atmega to the computer whenever we want. If we want to send data to the computer, we must wait until the computer checks if we have data to send. We can change the frequency of these checks by changing the pull interval. This keyboard is powered by the USB bus. Judging from the specifications of the components being used, I decide to request up to 100 milliamps of power from the computer. Enable USB function write so we can implement that function, which will read data from the computer. This data will be the computer telling the keyboard to light up the caps lock, num lock, or scroll lock LEDs.
Here is where the vendor ID and device ID of your device can be set. You should not change these IDs unless you are trying to copy another USB device or when duplicate or conflicting IDs are causing problems. The vendor name or manufacturer screen can be set here. You should use your own website domain for this. The device name can also be specified. Remember to specify the length of these strings correctly. A keyboard is a human interface device. Its class and subclass must be deferred to interface so that the interface class indicates that it is a human interface device. The interface class must be set for human interface device. The subclass must be set for boot and the protocol must be set for keyboard. This will allow the keyboard to work without an operating system. Human interface devices need a report descriptor, which we will write later. You must specify the length of this descriptor inside the configuration. All the settings I did not mention here should be left at their default values. And here I am just showing you that I have pasted in the finished version of the configuration file into the project. USB keyboards are human interface devices, so it needs a HID report descriptor. There is a HID descriptor tool on the USB.org website, which we are going to use to write this descriptor. Run the tool and use it to open the example descriptor for keyboards already provided with the download. Save this as a header file, which will generate the report descriptor as an array of bytes, which can be used with VUSB. Open the header file and copy the array of bytes into your code. The name of this array must be renamed from Report Descriptor to USB HID Report Descriptor. This array must also be placed inside the flash program memory. The length of the report descriptor must also be placed inside the configuration file. The report means the keyboard will send the computer a modifier byte, then a reserved byte, then six key codes. Use this to define and declare a data structure to be used. 